Well, it's only two minutes of a song, yeah? Why starting such a conference with this kind of song? Why do you think that I started this conference with this song? What does this song have to do with entrepreneur? Not only entrepreneur, but also being, being an employer these days is dangerous, isn't it? It's like being a hero, yeah, especially now, with all the changes that we've got. Yeah, so on the one hand, we need to be a hero, so we need to be able to overcome all the obstacles that we have, all right? And we need the resources to be able to do it. On the other hand, we could say that we are like a rebel, but with a cause. And today is about that. What's our cause? Because sometimes we become rebels, we become warriors, we become heroes, but we don't really know what this is all about. Yeah? Now, the funny thing is that when you look up the word entrepreneur on Google, right? Look what comes. Oops. A person who sets up a business or businesses taking on financial risks in the hope of, hope of profit. It's not very encouraging, is it? It's like the risk and in the hope of profits. And also, when you look up the word, you look up for the image, the first image that comes up when you look for entrepreneur is this one. So it's not very encouraging either, is it? On the one hand, we can see only one person doing a million things. He doesn't look very relaxed at all. So it gives us the impression of a stress. So not a, not a very good manage of time. Yeah? Doing a lot of things at the same time, losing track of what he's doing, etc. right? How many of you have felt this way at some point in your jobs? Yeah, haven't you? Yeah? How many of you feel happy, feel really excited, feel really passionate about what you're doing when you feel this way? Do you feel passionate when, 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 when you're doing all these things at the same time? You do? You do? Yeah? Well, maybe you've got a very, you know, you're very young. Maybe with time, yeah, it become a little bit more difficult. Yes, yeah, exactly. But when you have a lot of things at the same time, you know, and, and you don't really have the capacity of enjoying those things, yeah? So how many of you would like to go from this picture to this picture when you are the conductor? So imagine you being the conductor of an orchestra, yeah? where everything is happening, of course, you've got a melody, okay? Everything has to be done the proper way, otherwise the melody doesn't come out, the music doesn't come out, yeah? But everything is organized its own way, yeah? And the right way, because if one person or one thing goes out of the way, the melody doesn't sound the same way. Do you agree? Yeah? To do that, what do we need to do that? Well, one of the things we need to do that is to become conscious, to, beca to become aware of certain things. Yeah? Of course, this would be a conference for a long time, for a lot of hours. I would have to tell you and to ask you to do a lot of things, but we have no time today. So it's only going to be a taste. You know, like when you go wine tasting, just a drop, you know, in the ocean, all right? <laughs> okay, so. Instead of the definition that I wrote, uh, that, that we read at the beginning, this would be a better definition of what being an entrepreneur means. It's like personal branding. It's to think of yourself at work as a personal brander, I would say. I like this better. Why? Because it takes into account all your experience, all your competencies, all your actions and all your achievements. Because when you want to 
be an entrepreneur, everything counts. Who you are, what you've done in life, not only related to your job, but maybe related to another thing. And that's when innovation comes along. When we are able to choose one thing that we did in our personal life and another thing that we're doing at work, we put it together, we mix it, and from there comes the really good idea that nobody else can do it better than us. Yeah? So that's a better definition of what an entrepreneur is. And not only that, if we went through a difficult time in our life, that comes along at, at work, and we know how to overcome obstacles because we had to do it before time, before becoming an entrepreneur. Do you understand? So we are everything. We are not only employers. We are not only employees. We are not only entrepreneurs. We are everything. We are people. And we sometimes forget about that. We sometimes forget who we are. And we can't, because if anything happens in our personal life, it's going to affect our work. And we tend to put that apart. It's like, no, I'm not a person anymore. I'm working, you see? I'm going to put it aside, and we can't, okay? So, we need to become and to become like this picture, what does it mean? We need to become like eagles. We have to be able to look at the bigger picture. And to do that, being conscious, being aware, is having the capacity of having a look, a general look of everything, but at the same time, we need to become very specific. So when it's time to look at details, we also need the concentration to be able to look at details. So we need to go from the big picture to the details. And all that can be done by being aware, by being conscious. And one way to become conscious is through the question. But not, every, not any kind of question. It should be a question that we call in coaching, we call it the empowering question. And we're going to see today what this empowering question is about. Yes? Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't even said my name. I haven't even told you about myself. Because I didn't want to unless you were interested. Are you interested to find out who I am? Could you raise your hands if you're interested? Okay, then I'll tell you who I am. My name is Yolanda Barneda. Okay, I'm a, I, I do a lot of things in my life. Not only one thing, many things. I'm a teacher, I'm a coach. I'm an actress, I'm a, I'm a conscious leader, I'm a lot of things. Why? Because I didn't want to define myself. Why? Because I'm not the sort of person who defines herself in just one thing. But one part of my, of my profession is working at a SIG as a professor. A professor of, um, of masters, yeah, master's degrees. Okay, for entrepreneurs, for business people, for leaders, and for people who are working, who are at work. Yeah? This is my contact. If you want to contact me at any time, I always reply. Okay, I am one of those people who replies. Okay, so I'll be, I'll be delighted to get any of your thoughts, any of your feedback. Okay, so feel free. So, said that, we're going to do a game. I've divided the questions in two blocks, okay? They are all empowering questions related to being an entrepreneur. When I finish asking you the questions, I'm gonna ask you, what's the purpose of these two blocks, okay? Now, the ideal thing would be, because it's question, a question needs an answer, otherwise, What's the purpose of the question? So what I'd like you to do, if you have paper, if you don't feel like it because it's 4 o'clock, I understand, you're digesting, you may not feel like doing anything, but at least use your mind, okay? Use your mind. When I ask the question, use your mind and ask yourself these questions and try to find the answer. Of course, like, how many of you are entrepreneurs right now? Okay, how many of you are employers right now? Employers. How many of you are employees? 
Okay, so we'll need to adapt the questions depending on your situation, okay? So, the first block. First question, how passionate are you about your work, your business, your project? If you're looking for, for work, how passionate are you about looking for a job? Why? Because if you're not passionate about what you do, what happens? Forget it. You see what I mean? You need to find the passion. And if you're not really passionate about what you do, we could ask other questions. What is it about your work that you could be passionate about? Because maybe you need to change positions. Maybe you need to do another thing within the same job. But you need to be passionate. Yeah? So how passionate are you about your project, about being an entrepreneur? How talented are you? How do you do it? Because nobody was born knowing everything. But you need, some, some, you need to know what your talent is. Because if you're not very talented at something that you, your business needs, and you don't even like it, you need to delegate it. You see what I mean? That like you cannot do everything. You need to do the things you're passionate about and the things that you're talented about. Otherwise, you're boomed to failure. Because you don't have time for everything. You have to choose really well. Yeah? Now, how satisfied are you about the service money exchange? That means, what's your value in the market? How much money do you want to earn? And you need to think about that. That's why you need a plan, yeah? But you need to, to ask yourself, what's my value? And to know what your value is, there are two things. How well do I do my job? How well or how good is my business? What's the, what's the, I mean, what's the market about? Yeah, that would be another thing. Now, what impact does your project or your work have on other people? And when I say the other people, I also mean not only people around you, your co-workers, but it could also be your family, your friends. Because if it's a 24-hour job, and you have no time for your family, you have no time for your, for, for your friends, maybe it's not the best idea. If it's only for a time, you know that you're risking part of your life, personal life, because of your work. You may do that for some time, but not forever. We need to consider that. What impact will my project have on my family, on my job, on my, on my friends, on my coworkers, etc. Yeah. Now, very important, sometimes we, when we get really involved in what we do, we forget about the fact that we are people, that we are human beings. So, how much do you take care of your physical health, of your emotional health, and of your mental health? It's important to remember that we are people and we need to be healthy. Because if we are not healthy, we're not going to be productive. Yeah? So, we need to exercise. No, I don't have time to exercise because I'm working. We need to socialize. Emotions come from socializing. And we need to learn, to keep on learning, because our mind needs food. You see what I mean? If we stay the same, we don't learn new things. Like, we feel something is missing. We start being bored. You see? Whereas if we learn, if we keep on learning, we can add that value to our project because our project is a process. It's not a product. Not anymore. And even less today. You need to understand that when you have a product, that product is not stable. It cannot be permanent because the moment you want it permanent, something else happens in society and we need to add something else to it. Otherwise, it, is, it stops being interesting. 
That's why companies have these sections, innovative uh, sections, creative changes. We need to take that into account, yeah? So they're saying, yeah, how willing are, are, am I to learn, to keep on learning, yeah? What would I do if I was not afraid? Because fear is one of the things that stops us the most from doing things. And sometimes this fear is not real. It's imaginary. You see? Because we don't really know. Until we put things into action, we don't really know what's going to happen. There are two things possible. Things go well, things go wrong. If they go well, great. If they go wrong, we learn. So the best thing is to put it into action, because unless you put it into action, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You see? OK? So this is block one. Let's, let's have a look at block two. OK, once you're working with somebody, because of course we are uh, beings that need to be together with somebody, you cannot do everything. Even, even if you are yourself with your project, you always have clients. You see, so it's always somebody else. There is always somebody else. We are not alone in the universe. We are surrounded by people, right? So how well does your work cover your needs? If you're working, you need to ask yourself this question, OK? How valued do you feel at work? Maybe you but you're working with somebody else, and this other person feels that you're not so valuable, or you don't feel that this person appreciates you the way that you should be appreciated. OK? This could happen. Or how close do you feel to your workmates, to your partners, to your collaborators, to your clients? How close do you feel to them? OK? What's your relationship with them? How challenging is your work? Is it a work that you go and it's the same every day? No challenge? You're going to be bored to death if you do that then something is going on, you don't know what's, what's about, or even if it's a project, a personal project. Once you've done it for a long time, if you don't, if you don't add something new, you know, you're going to lose interest. And if you lose interest, your clients are going to lose interest because something is missing there. That's why the, it, the, it, it has to be, there has to be some kind of, that's why it's a process, that's why I insist, yeah, the way I see it. How compatible are your personal values to those of your work? You need to make a list of what your personal values are. If my personal value is freedom, I cannot work from 9 to 5 because I'm going to be really unhappy. If my personal value is honesty and my employer asks me to lie to a, to a customer, I cannot possibly do it because I'm breaking the law because the law are my values. And if I break any of my values, it's dangerous. Believe me. Then one day you feel really down, you feel really depressed, you don't know what's going on, and that's because you've broken one of your most important personal values. If you value family, and you don't go home until 9 o'clock because it's when your boss allows you to go home, you're breaking one of your most important personal values. Even if your job is the highest, best paid in the world. Do you understand? So your work, your project has to be compatible with your personal values. Okay? By the way, don't believe anything I say. These are my ideas. <laughs> okay? Now, when I talk, I may get passionate about it. But of course, everything goes to dust. Everything goes to the bin if that doesn't resonate with you, OK? I give you permission to throw everything away. Everything I say, you can throw it away if you don't feel it makes sense to you, OK? Then how much do you like your work environment? You need to feel well at your work environment. So for example, now that we are teleworking, OK? We need to feel a space where we feel well. There and I can see the kitchen and I'm being creative. Well, maybe the kitchen gets me creative. Maybe if I like cooking, 
But in my case, I, I don't really like cooking. So when I see the kitchen, it's like, it doesn't inspire me. You see what I mean? So I need to create a space, maybe a plant or a picture, a painting, something that inspires me, that when I'm there, I feel fine. Because otherwise, that physical environment is also influencing my energy. OK? And what legacy are you leaving to the world? Because what we do, you know, as workers, leaves a legacy to the world. So we need to, to understand that whatever you do in life is leaving a legacy. And so you need to consider that, yeah? So what's the purpose of block one and block two? Does anybody know? Why have I divided the questions into two blocks? Any ideas? No ideas? No, not completely, but the first one is quite, not how you are and how you feel, but it's your clothes. Any ideas? Yes. Yeah, very close, let me tell you. Block one is about you. It's about you and life, okay? You and life, meaning how you respond to life with your thoughts, with your emotions, with your physical uh, energy, etc. Yeah? This is uh, called intrapersonal because it depends to you only, okay? And it's also called by another person that I will tell you later, independence. Now, the other block is about interdependence. That means me together with other people, us, okay? That's called interpersonal or interdependence. This comes from two very important people, okay, writers, who are D Daniel Goldman, okay, talked about these two concepts, but he only referred to them um, with the concept uh, emotional intelligence, and he divided emotional intelligence into two blocks. One was intrapersonal, and the other one was interpersonal. As in intrapersonal, he, he thought of the way we manage our emotions, the way we know our emotions, the way we motivate ourselves, okay? And on the other hand, we had the relationship with other people, which were how we, our social skills, our empathy, our assertivity, yes? So all these things that we need to, to, we need to handle to be able to contact or to have a relationship with another person, okay? Now, very similarly, I really recommend this uh, article, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. He also made this difference between independence and interdependence, and he said, If you want to be a leader, that means if you want to lead other people, first you have to know how to lead yourself. Because if you don't lead yourself, you're not able to manage yourself, you're not going to be able to manage other people. And that's the big problem these days. That many people who lead other people cannot lead themselves. Or they are not even need to be interested in dealing with yourself. Okay? And he uh, talked about different habits. And the word habit is important because habit means that you put it into practice, not only one day, but you put it into, into practice one day, two days, three days, and 21 days at least. So it becomes a habit. So when you read these books, everything makes a lot of sense. But unless you put it into practice, it's not going to... <laughs> it's not going to change your life. It only changes your life when you put it into practice. That's why he said it has to become a habit. First, of course, you know about it. You become aware. That's awareness. And then you put it into practice. Yeah? That would be the idea. Okay? So I made a list myself 
of all the things that we need to control that are related to intrapersonal skills. Imagine what a list, being professional, self-fulfillment, self-knowledge, motivation, good management of feedback when people tell you their opinions. How do you take it? Are you good at taking feedback? Or you get aggressive when somebody goes against your opinion, you see? Uh, strengths and the areas of improvement, life balance, how balance is your life, okay? Personal balance, how balance are you in terms of physical, emotional, and mental, okay? Self-esteem, good, manage good management of limiting beliefs, good management of fear, good management of talent, good management of time, so a big list. Look how long this list is. This is about ourselves. This is our job, you see? Then, when we finish with this, or we have that clear, it's when we can go and deal with somebody else, which is inspiration, how we inspire people, empathy, assertiveness. Sometimes it's the ability to say no. Some people don't know how to say no, and that's being assertive, yeah? Um, trust, authenticity, being authentic, yeah? Problem solving, how you solve problems with other people when there's conflict, how you solve it, yeah? And, of course, teamwork, yeah? So, as you can see, the list of intrapersonal independent abilities is much longer than the list of interdependency. Inter, yeah? Okay. So, what makes an empowering question? Because, of course, these questions that I showed you were very general, okay? This is what co coaching does. Coaching never directs people on what they have to do, but they find out and they raise consciousness through questions, okay? So, what do we need to ask questions? Or even when you, for example, have to uh, decide something as a team, no? what's the best thing? What's the best way to ask empowering questions so as to raise consciousness? Well, the first step is before the question. Before the question, we need to be open to the answer. This looks very logical, but it's not. Because usually, when we ask a question, we may say, do you want to, uh, I don't know, do you want to go to the cinema or do you want to go to the theater? That's not an open answer, because I'm choosing the answers. An open answer, an open question would be, where do, what do you want to do today? Do you understand? Because if I say, do you want to do this or do you want to do that, I'm directing you because I'm choosing. I'm giving you two options, but it's my choice. It's not your choice. The, we do that at work. At work, we say, do you want to do this or what? do you want this or do you want that? No, no, what do you want? What do you think we could do to have a space for brainstorming, you see? If you give options, it's not an open question. You're not open to the answer. Yeah? Free of judgment, free of expectations, an atmosphere of trust. So if you want, for example, your coworkers to tell you your, their opinion about what's going on, if there is conflict at work, first you need to create an atmosphere of trust. If there is no trust, people are not going to say anything. Because what's the point? And the other thing is, they th if they think that you're going to judge their answers, so the minute somebody says something, you say, that's not the answer. That's not the answer. Oh, that's silly. That doesn't make sense. What, what are you talking about? No. You should be taking notes, thanks, give thanks, or thanks the, uh, the answer, and take notes. And then, of course, you need to put all that, consider all the answers, consider them, and then it's when you take action, yeah? Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So, quest um, so questions, empowering questions have to be open. When they are open, I don't know the answer. 
So that raises awareness. You wouldn't believe, I am a coach, you wouldn't believe sometimes when I ask a question to a client, to a coachee, sometimes I'm like, I can't, I can't judge it. But people respond very different things to the same question. Why? Because people belong to very different environments, to very different, they have very different histories or stories behind them. So their answers are very different, you see? But we don't usually ask open questions. We usually direct the questions. Do you like what I did? Do you like this way of doing it? Okay, yes or no. But what would you do? How would you do it? That's an open answer. Yeah, so anything that starts with what, when, where, how, you know, nothing that starts with an auxiliary in English, okay, or with a verb in Spanish or Catalan, yeah? So, an empowering question is usually relevant. The, the answer that we get is relevant. Imagine that we have, I don't know, like, now with the COVID, yeah, many, 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 Many companies don't know what to do because it's not the same to be face to face than to be online. Then maybe we should, ha we should have, I don't know, maybe not a meeting with everybody in the company because that would be unmanageable, yeah? But maybe we could have, I don't know, like some people and say, okay, let's have a brainstorming, you know? Let's brainstorm what we could do about this situation, okay? And then accept all the answers, yeah? Then, step three, after the question, we should consider the answer. How many times in companies they ask you your feedback and you never know about the feedback? Where did the feedback go? I don't know. It went to the cloud. Yeah, but it never came back. You see? Like you spend your time writing a feedback about a particular aspect of the company and it never came back to you. What does that do to the employee or to the person? You never answer a feedback again. You see? Or maybe you do, but if it's never considered, you stop doing it, yeah? So you need to consider feedback. You need to consider the questions, the answers that you get from people because they made an effort and also because they are interesting. And then you have to devise an action plan. And after the action plan, you have to do a follow-up. And then, of course, after the follow-up, you do another action plan. Because action plans are never great the first time. You see? So you need to keep doing, keep doing, and then see, OK, how is it going? Is it working? Is it not working? Etc. Yeah? OK? So thanks to good questions, OK, we can go from being um, victims that react to the environment, we can become heroes like the song, and we can respond to the environment. What does that mean? That when something happens, we need a space. Of course, imagine that something is emotionally powerful. Yeah? Like, for example, anger. We don't stop our emotion. We need to express our emotion. But our emotion has a message for us. What we do with that message depends on us. Do you see what I mean? Reacting would be maybe hitting if it's anger. You see? That's maybe what you feel like doing. But one thing is feeling like doing something, and another thing is doing it. So we need a little space to think about it, to ask ourselves empowering questions to know how we need to react to that particular thing. Do you understand? So asking, having, having the space to ask yourself certain questions. If you have a project in mind, if you want to become an entrepreneur, you need to, to ask yourself, how passionate do I feel? What do I need to learn to become an entrepreneur? Who do I need? around me to be able to, how much money do I need? Um, many open questions, even yourself or together with those people you want to 
you know, set up this business with? See? And then from those questions, you build it up. And then while you're being an entrepreneur, you also need to ask yourself a lot of questions. Yeah? So reacting to life would be action without conscience. Yeah? So that's a reaction to life. Yeah? Whereas being a hero, being the creator of your life means action plus conscience. And then it's when you respond to life. You don't react to life. You respond to life. Yeah? All right? So, well, it's almost the time. Yeah? I would like you to say goodbye with a namaste. Yeah? This is a symbol that I really like and that unites all of us, you know, and sees the light in me, but it also sees the light in you. So I really hope that all your projects come to life and that you respond to them. You don't react to them. Yeah? Okay. And if you have, well, any questions or anything, I, I will be welcome to answer any questions. Thank you. Do you have any, any doubts or any comments, anything that you would like to say? He's got a microphone. Who's the brave one? <laughs> <laughs> no questions? Yes. He's, she's got a question. Hi, thanks. So I arrived a little bit late. Apologies if I'm asking something that you might have addressed earlier. But I, I see a lot of relevance and importance in the way that you have to listen and let people complete their thoughts. And now we're in an age where a lot of meetings take place online. And for example, you can't even see my mouth when I'm speaking. You, can't, you don't know if I'm smiling. You don't know anything. So when you're in a Zoom call with four or five different people, how would you translate the skills so that I'm not speaking over somebody, but you only have 40 minutes. You know, there are a lot of things that I think are beautiful about it, but, but in practice, it's not always so simple. It's to sit and listen to somebody, uh, maybe repeat something that's happened. And so I just was wondering if you could expand a little bit on how you see that as fitting into your strategy. Yeah, of course, like life sometimes happens really fast. Yeah, and so sometimes we don't really have lots of minutes to be able to respond to life. But the moment you, you're certain that you need to be aware of what you're doing, even if you sometimes do something that you regret, you know, if you're aware of that, you can always go and, and, and redo it. You see what I mean? Like you could always go and apologize or even go and say, look, you know, what I said before, I think it was completely out of the way. What do we do sometimes? We react to life. We don't even know that we are reacting. We don't even know that whatever we do has, a, has an impact on somebody. You see, we don't even go and, and apologize because we think that's not the way it should be. You see? So sometimes life happens so fast, or emotions are so powerful, especially now, you know, with the COVID and everything. Our emotions are really, you know, on the edge, you see? So sometimes it's impossible to control everything, but we can't re then go home, ask ourselves the right questions and say, I mean, what I did was the best way to, you know, sort out this, this particular thing or whatever, you know? And if it wasn't, you, you can always re, re undo it. Do you see what I mean? I, that's, that would be my... But to tell you the truth, when you start being aware, when you start being conscious, you are not that fast. That means you stop yourself before you act. And you give yourself some time, even if it's that second. Even if it's that, those two seconds. But those two seconds stop you from doing something that you would probably regret. And if you do something you cannot apologize, at least you learn. And next time that happens, you can, you can act in a, in a completely different way. You see what I mean? But there are a lot of people that 
are not aware. They don't care. They just do it and that's it. And they don't even ask themselves, what impact does that have on my workers? What impact that, does that have on my project? And they don't even undo it because they don't have the, the conscience. They're not aware. They don't even care. But in the long run, this is going to affect their companies. This is going to affect their productivity. This is going to affect their talent, the talent at work, because those people who are not happy at work are going to leave. As easy as that. They may not say anything because they are never asked. Or their feedback is never taken into account. Those people are going to go somewhere else. And this is happening these days. That's why companies want to keep good workers. But in order to keep good workers, all those things that I mentioned before have to be taken into consideration. We are people, you see? We are workers, and of course there is management of time, management of talent, management of, of conflict, management of a lot of things within the company, okay? being productive, management of stress these days, of course. But to be able to manage all those things, you need to ask yourself the right questions. And I can tell you that because my experience, when I work face to face with a coachee who comes to me completely burned out, and by just asking some questions, of course it's a process, but maybe with five, six, seven sessions of coaching, which is only about questioning, not about directing or telling people what to do. People know what they have to do. You see what I mean? Yeah? So, did I ask, answer your question? Yes, more or less? Yeah? Okay. Any other questions? Any other thoughts or? Well, I hope you found it useful, okay? Thanks a lot for coming. It was a difficult time, yeah, <laughs> to come. So I hope it was uh, useful to you, okay? Thank you.